Today, I will share with you three simple technical analysis tools I use to put massive cash flow in my pocket every month and to improve the odds of winning in my option trades. By the time this video is finished, you will clearly understand these three simple technical analysis tools so you can begin using them to put cash in your pocket starting today. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click the subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. First, why should you use technical analysis? Let's try this. What do you see on your screen right now? Nothing, right? A blank screen. Now what do you see? Quite a bit, wouldn't you agree? Technical analysis can help turn a blank screen when it comes to stock and option trading into a beautiful ocean video filled with information to help you make better trading decisions. I'm excited to share with you the simple technical analysis tools I use to be a better, more profitable option and stock trader. What technical analysis tools do you use? Or are you brand new to technical analysis? In the comments below, let me know what your favorite technical analysis tools are, or if you're brand new to technical analysis. I'm looking forward to seeing where you're at on this fun subject. And stay tuned until the end of this video, where I will give you a bonus technical analysis tool I use that makes looking at charts very quick and easy, thus saving you a ton of time when you're looking for your next trade. Over the past few videos, I've been talking about a position that I've been trading in Kraft Times, ticker symbol KHC. I started out by selling the 27 and a half puts in January, and I've been rolling those puts ever since. A couple weeks ago, I went ahead and sold a full short put position in this stock, and technical analysis is the reason why I did that. Before we dive into this position, I first want to make sure you know that I only trade stocks that I feel good about fundamentally. For reasons discussed in previous videos that I won't go into here, I like Kraft Heinz fundamentally. It's a company that has been really beaten down, and I've been waiting to put on a full short put position until technical analysis gave me the green light. A few weeks ago, that happened. Now you're probably watching this video at least a week or two after I wrote and maybe even filmed it. It takes quite a bit of time to make these videos, so just understand that you'll have the benefit of hindsight on me here. But I also don't trade for the short term. Yes, I like to trade options monthly, but my decisions are based on the fact that when I enter an option trade on a stock, I expect to be in that stock in one form or another forever or until the fundamentals change on the company. So here we go. What technical analysis tools prompted me to move into a full position on Kraft Heinz? The first one is volume. Volume is defined as the number of shares traded in a stock for a specific period of time. How can we use volume to be on the right side of trades? Let's look at the chart of Kraft Heinz and see. First here, look at the daily chart of Kraft Heinz. Notice there on the bottom, right where I've circled the daily volume bars, that over the past few weeks, volume has increased as the corresponding candlesticks or stock price moved higher. The green volume bars are up days and the red are down days. Notice two things here. First, on the green up days, the average volume is higher than on the red down days. When you see stronger or higher volume on up days, that's a good indication that there is more interest in buying this stock than selling it. Second, notice that the volume has been dropping the past five days. This corresponds to, if you look at the top of the candlesticks or price action of the chart, the decrease in volume is coupled with the stock price reaching a peak and basically losing steam or topping out. It reminds me of an ocean wave. You see it has hit that $35 mark and can't seem to push through it. As a matter of fact, the ability to push the stock higher seems to be diminishing for now. On the one hand, the stock seems to be bullish because there's more up or green volume days than down red volume days over the past few weeks, and the number of shares traded on those up days is greater than the number of shares traded on the down days. But now it seems as though this wave might be running out of steam. It's like the top of a literal ocean wave. When the wave is highest, typically you know that pretty soon it'll crest and the wave will subside until the next wave begins. The same thing is happening here. 
it tells us that this wave that pushed Kraft Heinz from around $31 per share to $35 per share seems to be running out of steam. And we can expect it to either drop some and retest the previous high of the previous wave, which is around 33 and a half, or maybe even retest the green 50 moving average line, which we'll get to in just a minute. Let's stay here on the Kraft Heinz daily chart and talk about the second technical analysis tool I like to use, which is the actual candlesticks on the chart itself. What can the candlesticks tell us? They tell us that overall, this chart and Kraft Heinz is in an uptrending market on the daily time frame. Well, how do we know that? Each progressive high and low part of the next wave is higher than the previous high and low of the wave before it. Notice here that the previous wave's high was around $34. The current wave has now topped out around $35. The previous wave's low was around $28. The current wave's low is around $31. So we're seeing higher highs and higher lows. This tells us that Kraft Heinz is now in an upward trend on the daily chart. Contrast its current higher highs and higher lows with the time period between January and April early this year. Here you see it was making lower highs and lower lows. That confirmed that it was in a downtrend on the daily chart. Also notice that the red down days volumes were a lot higher volume than the green up days volumes back then. Again, another indication that it was in a downtrend. We're going to get to that third awesome technical analysis tool I use, but if you're liking the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned in until the end of this video because I'm going to share with you my favorite technical analysis tool I use that makes my trading decisions so fast and easy because it only requires a quick glance. Let's continue. The third technical analysis tool I like to use before we get to that bonus tool is the moving averages. I like to use the 50 and 200 period moving average on all of my time frame charts. Some people like to use the exponential moving average, but remember, I like things simple, and as such, I use the simple moving average. Well, what is the simple moving average? The simple moving average is the average of a group of prices, usually closing prices, plotted on the chart for each period. So for example, on the 50 day moving average, the simple moving average is the average stock price of the last 50 days. And the 200 day moving average is the average stock price of the last 200 days. Put simply, if the 50 moving average is higher or above the 200 moving average, the stock is in an uptrend for that time frame. If the 50 moving average is lower or below the 200 moving average, the stock is in a downtrend. Here on our chart, the green moving average line is the 50 day moving average and the red line is the 200 day moving average. Notice how until the teal up arrow, Kraft Heinz was in a downtrend because the green 50 moving average was below the red 200 moving average. But on June 16th, the green 50 moving average crossed over and above the red 200 moving average. And at that time, Kraft Heinz switched from being in a downtrend or bear trend to an up or bull trend on the daily chart. By the way, if you'd like your charts to automatically put that crossover arrow there for you, like the till up arrow on my chart, in Interactive Brokers, you can find it under studies and it's called the MA crossover. You should have something similar in your trading platform. Now notice what has happened around the moving averages. Moving averages tend to act as magnets and trampolines. Notice how when Kraft Times was in a downtrend, the 50 and 200 moving averages seemed to pull the stock price back to them from time to time. But once the stock price reached them, it tended to bounce off of them like a trampoline and push them back down. Now that Kraft Heinz is in an uptrend, that 50 moving average and to some extent the 200 moving average again seem to pull the stock back to them from time to time. But once the stock reaches that moving average, it tends to bounce off of it. Right now, the 50 moving average seems to be a nice place where the stock might find support and bounce higher. As such, I would expect Kraft Heinz to try and come back down and possibly get as low as $32 per share or where the 50 moving average is currently at. It may not, but the odds are the magnetic pull of that 50 moving average will try to pull the stock back to it before the stock tries to bounce off of that trend line again to try and begin a new wave up. That's why that 50 moving average is where I have sold some puts as you can see here on the screen. Using all the technical analysis tools we have discussed here, I decided to do a full position in Kraft Heinz 
by selling a full complement of short puts. I feel so strongly about this trade and the stock's ability to move higher as I discussed in previous videos that I actually sold the $35 strike puts as you can see on the screen here. Ideally, it would be awesome if the stock would drop down to the 50 moving average and then we sell puts just below that moving average. But as long as you know that the stock price has the potential to come back to that 50 moving average, then selling puts anywhere in that general vicinity could prove to be profitable. Keep in mind that all of these technical analysis tools are helpful. They cannot guarantee when a stock will change trends and direction. At some point, this current uptrend on the daily chart will change back into a downtrend. We don't know when, but technical analysis definitely helps in putting the odds in your favor as an option trader. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I would give you my favorite bonus technical analysis tool that will make it quick and easy to make trading decisions. That tool is channels. Let me show you how they make trading decisions so quick and easy. I'm going to switch from my interactive brokers charts to my E-Trade charts because I really like how channels look on E-Trade. Take a look at this chart of Kraft Heinz. It's not very easy to quickly make any decision on this chart, is it? Now watch what happens when I add in the channel tool. Wow. Using this technique, I'm able to quickly run through the approximately 160 stocks I track weekly to pick out the ones that are primed to sell put options on or to buy outright in my retirement account. By the way, if you'd like access to my weekly top five stocks that I plan to trade that week, check out how to become a patron at the link in the description below. You'd be supporting this channel and getting some awesome extras that might give you some weekly trading ideas as well as other great information to help you become a more profitable option trader or stock trader. And a quick shout out and thank you to Nancy, our latest Patreon member. Thank you for your support. I deeply appreciate it. Now looking at this channel tool, it's so easy to see when the stock price is at a level where it's a good time to sell puts and calls or buy the stock at, or just wait to do anything. The channel also really quickly helps you to see when the stock has changed trend direction. In this case, it was really quick and easy for me to see at the down arrow that Kraft Heinz has switched from a downtrend and was trying to break out into a new uptrending channel. Now you might be saying, but Randy, you've been doing this for a long time. It's easy for you to draw those channel lines. Let me show you how easy it is. I like to draw my trend and channel lines on the weekly charts then switch back to the daily charts. But you can draw them on any time frame you like. One reason I like trading on E-Trade is that once I put my channel in place, it doesn't matter what time frame chart I swap to, the channel stays exactly where it was. Personally, I look at multiple time frames when making trading decisions. That is a subject that I'll talk to in a future video, but for now, just make sure to connect the two most recent low points of the two most recent waves for the bottom of the channel and the two most dominant or high points of the two most recent waves for the top of the channel. This gives you a nice looking channel that you can use to make trading decisions. In an uptrending situation, ideally you'd like to sell puts when the stock is at the bottom of that channel where I have the black circles. And if you're using a covered call strategy, sell calls when the stock is at the top of the channel or where I have the red circles. This will massively put the odds in your favor for two reasons. First, since you'll be selling put options at the bottom of the channels, you'll be selling when volatility is higher as compared to selling puts when the stock is at the top or middle of the channel when volatility is lower. Because you'll be selling puts after the stock has recently dropped in price, thus most likely it will have increased volatility. This will put more cash and higher premiums right into your pocket. The second reason is that if the stock gets put into your account, not only are you buying it after a good drop in price, so at a better price, but you've already been paid that higher put premium because you sold the puts at a time when volatility was higher. So you'd be buying at a lower price and getting paid more for selling those put options. It's a total win-win. You're winning two times before you even think about the stock getting put into your account. The reverse can be done if you're using a covered call strategy. Way to sell call options is the stock is at the upper part of the channel or in the red circles. You will get more for those call option premiums because buyers are excited after seeing the stock go up so much that they will pay more for those call options that you're selling. Typically, I try to do exactly what I've described here. Every week, I'm looking for new stocks that are in the lower part of their channels, the black circle area, to swap out for other stocks that have pretty much lost all their time value premium. 
By using these technical analysis tools, you can have a continual supply of good companies to sell put and call options on that will keep your pockets full of cash. As a note, sometimes I will sell put options when the stock is not at the bottom of the channel or call options when the stock is not at the top of the channel because I believe it may take too long for the stock to get there and I like to keep cash rolling into my account. But I will only do this if I get a bare bones minimum of 15% cash on cash annualized return on the option. Typically it's a lot higher than 15%, but that's the bare minimum I will accept. Check out the videos in the link above and in the description below for real examples of how I use the technical analysis tools discussed in this video to make real life trades. As you will see, the cash flow can be awesome. In my next video, I will do a recap of all the cash flow I received in the month of July by selling call and put options as well as collecting some dividends. So if you'd like to know as soon as that video is released, hit the subscribe and bell notification buttons. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.